Good morning. I hope you're all awake. Uh, we are looking at fasting. Matthew chapter 6, verse 17 to 18. The Bible says, but when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. These are some of the instructions about uh, fasting. Matthew chapter 6 verse 17 to 18. Now in those days there's a lot of showing off. Anything they do they want to show off. And the leaders and the ones that have led them in showing off are their leaders. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes. Whatever they do, they do so that people will see. Even when they pray, they pray loudly. I think you've heard of one, of, one person's prayer that Jesus spoke about. Who said, Father, is it Father, not Father God? I, I am not a sinner like this one who is standing there. I give tight of everything I earn. I fast once in a week. I read your word. I do all these. That's the prayer they make. Even as they pray you here, they're showing off. Jesus saw that and is, and is speaking against it. He says, Let, it's, not, it's, a must, it's not a must for somebody to know that you're fasting. And also there's nothing bad for them to know that you're fasting. The only problem is if you want to show off. When you, when you have an intention to show off, what is, what is acting is pride. Or the self, the old self. Your selfishness is coming out. And many times when you want to show off, you want to show that Others don't matter like you matter. Mm. Others, others are useless. Always you want to lift yourself above others. That mentality of holier than thou, mm. holier than. That is what the, the Pharisees carried. And uh, it is what the devil in the beginning had. You read that one in chapter number 14 of the book of Isaiah from verse 12. How the devil decided, he planned in his heart, I'm going to rise above God. Now they're going to worship me. They're going to. They're now going to worship me. They're going to. Uh, So there should not be, when you believe Jesus, when you get born again, one thing that should die, you should die. Paul says, I die daily. I die every day. In other words, there's, there's a part in you that has to be killed. The part that want to know, want to be seen, want to be known. This part in you that says you are better than, you are better than others, like I am better than. When you come to salvation, you prefer other more than you. And so many, so many scriptures say, prefer other more than yourself. You should see others better than, than you. You should think and concern, and you have concern for others more than yourself. That is what is called sacrifice. Before you are born again, you are selfish. When you get born again, you become sacrificial. <laughs> you do everything sacrificially. Having others in mind. Before you came to Christ, eh? 
nikapigia simu hata nisipo msalimia anasaidia na nini ananiongezea nini are there people who talk like that even if he cannot be in my life wani kuna nini so somebody should only be in your life when you can get something from them so fasting fasting uh, is is what we do to to communicate to god to to go deeper in our fellowship with god and if that is the case uh, jesus is saying it's not a must that una unakaa kama ume umeparara and you put a, a very sad face and show people that you know i am praying you know I'm, even they see you so that they see how angry you are not hungry in fact you are both hungry and angry uh, there's no food you didn't eat and you look very terrible in your face and let people know that you are very powerful and you are very serious <laughs> yeah so i think that is the attitude the attitude we are to have when we fast the only one who should no if possible but the truth is sometimes uh, people will know that you're fasting nakupa chakula you need temptation kama ile ya yesu we are eating karibu seno am i'm fasting it's not bad for them to know but it's also bad for you to make them know that you are fasting and just for you to to show yourself that you are a bit stronger in the book of acts chapter number 13 verse 1 to 4 the bible says now there were at antioch in the church that was there prophets and teachers barnabas and simeon who were called the nigers look at that one prophets and and teachers and lucius lucius of cyrene and manain who had been brought up with Herod and the Tetrarch and Saul five men are named here while they were ministering to the Lord and fasting the holy spirit said set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them then when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them they sent them away so being sent out by the holy spirit they went down to seleucia and from there they sailed to cyprus yesterday we saw the holy spirit led jesus into wilderness to fast we also see here the holy spirit setting apart people to fast and pray so that they are sent for the work that they are you see in the new testament the ministers of the gospel their ministry begins in prayer and fasting they take enough time to fast pray fast pray fast As I said yesterday you see in the New Testament only those that have been uh, I think the scriptures we are given are of them that have been already assigned some work by God they say, themselves they know and they spend time before God this year we must spend spend enough time before God this year anybody who is to serve in the house of God anyone whether you are an usher you are an elder i'm going to read to you another one another verse when they selected elders when they selected elders what did they do they fasted and prayed is another place i will show you so fasting majorly here you see that where we read is about them that have been uh, they are called sanctify them that have been put aside them that have been put aside 
to do the work of God. So if you serve God in any way, whether you, you play keyboard, whether you you, you una take picture ya, ya watu, una pick a picture, whether you you sing, whether whatever you do, first thing should be a way of life. You only access God. I mean, you'll only access God when you take some time aside in a very cool place, silent place and you give your mind and thoughts and you allow him to speak to you even before you stand before people. If you cannot pray and fast, don't serve in the house of God. This one becomes the policy of this house this year. Anybody who will stand here, who want to stand here, and I don't see them praying when we are praying, you don't need to stand here. You don't. You are disqualified from serving in this church. Amen. Anybody who, <laughs> as we pray every day, Monday to Friday, we are praying. This, this time we are creating for people to pray we should take advantage and we should come and pray. Our ministry goes nowhere when we don't fast and, and pray. It is not extraordinary in nature. The ministry we do for God, there should be something supernatural about it. And there is no supernatural without prayer. There's nothing. Why do people find ministry very hard? They don't pray. Yesterday in pastor's fellowship, a pastor was saying, one pastor said, I asked some students, who want to become a pastor? Nobody. Then he asked another question. Who want to marry a pastor? No. <laughs> In Ethiopia and Uganda, ladies are, are struggling to get a pastor. In Kenya, they are running from pastor. What is the problem? <laughs> we have displayed a very bad picture of who a pastor is in Kenya. And if you look at in both Ethiopia and Uganda, Many of their ministers are not Bible people from Bible college. In other words, their experience is not only about Bible college. They also have Bible, going to Bible college is not bad, but they also have somebody who is anointed. They sit under because the, the information you get in the Bible college is not enough. There has to be a man of God who has to be in your life to release anointing in your life. Teachers that teachers in Bible college are not anointed. When I mean, what is what I mean? Don't misquote me. And when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes, there is anointing given for work. Specific work. It's called also grace. Now when you serve that man, when you listen to that man, when you learn from that kind of man, that anointing will come upon you. The anointing for work. So people have information but they don't have anointing for work. The anointing for work creates doors for you. You don't struggle. It causes provision to be... Huh? Pastor Lai says, when you are when you when you are graduating last year October, God God is going to give you women, and in fact it was very specific. He says he's going he's going to give you specifically women. I don't know men. What have you done? Look at the Bible. Men are always opposing the men of God. Women are always surrounding 
Jesus, Elijah, read all of those ones. There are people, when the anointing comes upon you for work, there are people that are stationed to support that work. Naturally, you, you, you just see somebody is supporting and you, you didn't even tell him. They are carrying that burden. They are like, huh? when I was in Western, in Kimilidi, 2011, I, I don't know how I did crusade. You know, the first time I came there, I did a big crusade there. And uh, I, was, I brought another guy currently in Hong Kong, in China. Solomon Abeta. I called him to come and we do crusade. And uh, now doing crusade is not easy. The church where I am has only two speakers come here. And I told him, we are doing crusade. And they're like, hey, there's a lecturer. He still is in, 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 he's still in uh, Chuka University. This guy is observing everything I'm doing from the time I entered there. He tells me he has a butchery. When I was doing that crusade, he is standing by to pay everything what I am. When I came here in Marseille, there are those who have been stationed. We, we only bought a motorbike once, yeah? The first time. The remaining three motorbikes were given. Somebody is just observing. One day they come and ask me in 2017, we see you're going to all these schools. We are worried. How are you going? Can we give you a motorbike? What else do you need? This camera that Dennis is using was bought at that time. The laptop I have. Uh, then I was given money to print books for the high school. Somebody is being disturbed somewhere until what I am doing succeeds. Even when I began the church, there are some people who are just Wondering, how can he? That's why staying in his presence brings you everything that you need. The anointing will always keep you under the feet of God. Under God's feet, always. The anointed are always looking, seeking for his face. Many people who don't even know how to pray, they pray when they, they learn praying when they come under the man of God who is anointed. The oil is on. And they are like, this is, now if God has set these people as, aside and he has prepared them for some specific work, in other words, there's something on them, there's oil. They received oil. You can't serve even as an usher without anointing. You will be this unwilling one that we will always be calling. Si ukuje. Si ukuje. This unwilling type that always want to be motivated. Pushed. Men who receive anointing don't struggle to serve God. They sacrifice anything to do the work of God. Fasting is a sacrifice. Fasting, going without food, is a sacrifice. Staying the whole day waiting for God. Acts chapter number 14, verse 23. And when they had appointed elders for them in every church, having prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord in whom they had believed. Having prayed with fasting. This also talks about elders of the church. You must fast and pray. And, and fasting, prayer and fasting has to become a very common habit in your life. Very common habit very common habit. In the Old Testament when they appoint you to any position they pour oil on you. They pour oil on you. Whichever, whether you are becoming a priest, whether you are becoming a king or a prophet, they pour oil 
And when they release oil on you, the Holy Spirit comes on you. In the, Old Testament, in the New Testament, we don't anoint people with oil. It's a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Today you can receive Holy Spirit without oil being poured on you. Today the, the easiest thing you do is to, to, to lay your hand on somebody. And they receive. If they want to receive Holy Spirit in Jesus name. It's not a must you pour. If you are ordaining somebody. In today's language they talk what they call what Jesus called commissioning. They called it ordaining. Ordaining. Uh, and they put oil on. There's a lot of uh, religion there. The best way to ordain is to pray. To lay a hand on you. Pray for you and then to release you. There's no problem if people are using oil. But the problem is, now am I contradicting myself? <laughs> the problem is you're trying to do, you're buying oil when the Holy Spirit is present. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was only on them that serve, not others. They didn't receive. Today, everybody can be filled with the Holy Spirit. But the anointing to serve to minister is different from the anointing we first received. There's, I think I, saw, I spoke about the two anointing. The one that the inside one and the, the upon one. The anointing within helps you develop spiritually. It creates hunger in you for God and for his word. If you, you feel like you want to know more. You, something is driving you from the inside. This one is for your growth. First John chapter 2 verse 20 and chapter 2 verse 27 that is the anointing to grow but now uh, this one that you need for as I finish this one that you need for uh, for the work that also also it will force you to seek his face to sit you desire just to walk into God's presence because you cannot do his work by yourself you can't. You realize that. And you say, let me just go and stay. Questions that you don't have answers. You sit under his feet to get it from, to download from heaven. Problems that you don't have solution. You sit under his feet. And then you do what? Sometimes as we are doing ministry, there are so many difficult things that you come out of, across. You solve that difficulty in the place of prayer. Those ones who don't pray, go everywhere talking about the problems that are there. Crying about every problem. Then that is there, the place of prayer, they speak solution, not problems. If you hear somebody say, hey, challenges, kuna watu ukiwaskia, jina challenge, wezi, neno challenge, wezi kwa kosa kwa, kwa, kwa neno yao. Challenge. Challenge. Those ones are not a praying type. Those ones are a complaining type. <laughs> when you sit in his presence and you bring the issue before God, he will help you how to sort it. He. In fact, sometimes you might not even need to ask somebody. God can, it can, the solution can dawn on you while you are in his presence praying. This is what is disturbing me. What can I do? The Holy Spirit can give you a solution. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 4 to 6. In everything, commending ourselves as servants of God, in much endurance, in affliction, in hardship, in beatings, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in sleeplessness, watching, in hunger, fasting, in purity, in knowledge, in patience, in kindness, in the Holy Spirit, in genuine love. There's something there. Patience, fasting, in fasting. Hmm? When problems become much, 
you need to add another problem on your stomach through fasting. <laughs> when issues are coming in a way that you cannot understand, you can go into his presence. Fast and pray. We can access every solution to our problem if we can learn how to fast and pray. That is the opportunity and believers don't have. That's the opportunity that people, somebody sang a song, what a friend we have in Jesus. Uh -huh. Have you heard of that song? I want just to, to read that, the first stanza to you and then, I, and then we pray. I want you to just listen to this, the writings of these songs. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in, in prayer. So what a privilege of living a peaceful life. When you take everything to God in prayer. Why are you dying of depression? Why are you asking questions that you think there is no answer? In prayer, fasting, fasting. So prayer is a place where you sort all issues of life. Like when we come here and we begin speaking in tongues for 10, 20, 30 minutes, praying, speaking, that praying, you're downloading solution without knowing. People who speak in tongues consistently for some minutes, for some 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, they don't get stressed. They don't get stressed. They don't disturb there's a way peace that surpasses human understanding will settle their hearts and minds. People who pray in tongues, even if there's a problem, you pray. You say, you fast. You say, today I'm fasting. This problem has to end. So every minister in the house of God must fast and pray. They say, if you will not read, you will stop leading. If you will not fast, you should stop ministering. When you don't fast and pray, you give your mind to people. What do you think? If you fast and pray, you bring God's idea to people. Yeah, I think that's enough. We can have some time, to, some time to pray. Just take yourself before him and for the next 20 minutes I want you to pray. I want you to pray in Jesus' name. Yes, you are free to rise up and begin walking around as you pray. The reason as why we want people to walk around is Sometimes when you sit down, we think you are praying and you have left. <laughs> uh -huh. You just close your eyes. People think you are here. In the name of Jesus. Mashaka tala Makote Pasata Labada. Rek Lebro City Biglada 